Kamala Harris is doing her best to emerge from the bursting Democrat presidential field. So she went on with my friend Charlemagne, the God, and did her best Hillary impression. Check out the Pandering Express. I know the answer to this, too. They say you oppose legalizing weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. I have my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 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 they be so mad but, at you. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did inhale. I did inhale. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. I know you have to remember the high? <laughs> I do. So if it was legalized all throughout the country <laughs> and medicinal, would you, you know, do it? Listen, again? I think that it gives a lot of people joy and we need more <laughs> joy. <laughs> No, oh, what a joy it is to unearth someone's hypocrisy. She had a very different kind of giggle fit in 2014 when she was running for re-election as California AG. Watch. Your opponent, okay. Ron Gold, has said that he is for the legalization of marijuana recreationally. Your thoughts on that? Um, I that he's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> So like any other politician seeking to leapfrog to the highest office, she's conveniently repositioning herself, but it's pretty disingenuous to say she's been pro-cannabis all along. She opposed Proposition 19 in 2010 that would have legalized recreational marijuana back then and was vague at best about her position thereafter. But I guess hindsight is 420, and this opportunistic oppressor who laughably labels herself a progressive prosecutor is now repainting her messy history with a kinder brush. The woman who once served as San Francisco DA is now having her missteps recorrected by the man who now holds that former post as George Gascon is reviewing and resentencing thousands of marijuana felony convictions that wrongly fell under Kamala's watch. Hell, even her former sweetheart Willie Brown has soured on her and says her tepid record and cold heart aren't enough to unseat the current president. Oh, Willie. Willie or won't he? Sure, this race is crowded, but it will only get interesting when Democrats finally call out the hypocrites among them, take the gloves off, and beat each other before they take on the man they love to hate. Smoke on that. That's the memo. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris doesn't only have a sketchy record when it comes to weed. As San Francisco DA and California AG, she also stood up for dirty prosecutors, jailed the parents of truant kids, especially those who were lower income, and resisted broader criminal justice reform. So how long will it take for the other 2020 contenders to call her out for being a total fraud? Tonight's party panel is back. Alex, Robbie, and Jessica. Uh, Robbie, of course. I will start with you. You know, of yes. course, she's trying to say that, you know, joy to those who smoke the reefer and marijuana for all. But when she right. was California AG, she made sure a lot of people went to prison for nonviolent marijuana. Exactly. Defenses. As you said, this is a recent new position for her. Mm -hmm. I, if she has changed her mind, I'm glad she has. But not so long ago, she was on the, the non-progressive, non-libertarian side of this. Uh, her policy for putting, uh, that she supported for putting parents of kids who don't show up to school in jail would have ex exacerbated all sorts of economic problems and for, for kids who can't who don't show up to school I mean, this is not the answer I don't think anyone believes this is the answer to education problems to like like put more people in jail to try to solve this issue of course uh, so she has a record that should really be screwed now even among people in the you know this is an area where I might agree with someone on the left that that she is would not be the ideal candidate for criminal justice reform uh, reasons uh, some civil liberties issues with a lot of her positioning on on, um, on uh, sex trafficking that she's been all very outraged about mm -hmm. Um, very concerning things. No, but that's that's one of those interesting areas uh, within feminism where there right. is a great deal of disagreement. And it's like, who has agency over their own body? And the thing about Kamala that I find interesting is, you know, there's so many news organizations that are willing to give her a pass on her past record. But at some point when she really emerges as the crystallized front runner, the others are going to have to go after her. When does that happen? Hopefully not for a few months. I and mean, you have seen an amazing level of camaraderie amongst this group. Cory Booker joking about, Sherrod Brown joking that Cory Booker, you know, got a hoarse voice so that he could imitate him better. And they're all playing very nice on Twitter, but it is what it's two weeks in mm -hmm. to this grind. Um, so we'll have to get another 10 candidates in before it gets dirty. I think the issue with Kamala Harris comes down to the fact that there is just a, a branch of the left wing, as my friend put it to me yesterday at our, our friend's first birthday party, 
I just don't like prosecutors. He was a Bernie guy. He's an Elizabeth Warren person mm -hmm. now. He's, I just don't like prosecutors. But there are a number of really smart pieces out right now about how Democrats are focused on electability. And that is what we are going to be for first and foremost, that we will not have what happened in 2016 again, where people refuse to coalesce around the candidate, and we end up 77,000 votes shy of winning the presidency. So we got time before it gets nasty, but it's going to be a talking point, but then I think we're going to all get there. Well, they're, they're going to have to do something because only one person can be the nominee and take on the president. So, uh, you know, are, are they doing the smartest thing right now in protecting each other or is it just a bunch of phony baloney nonsense? Well, I think the problem is, is that they all ran so far to the left and they all engaged in this giant apology tour afterwards to sort of apologize for various missteps, whether it's Elizabeth Warren and the Cherokee Nation or it's Kamala Harris and her record as Attorney General of, of California and mm -hmm. District Attorney of San Francisco, um, you know, there's been this string of apologies that have followed a record um, that's out there that now is indistinguishable um, among sort of the top contenders that are out there, whether it's Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris or Kirsten Gillibrand, they all look pretty homogenous from mm -hmm. the outside. So I think that it's only a matter of time before they start pointing out these differences because... They better. You know, if I, I were yeah. Kamala Harris, I would be like... Oh no, Kirsten! You were you were horrible on guns. I mean, I think she was great on guns when she was pro Second Amendment. Uh, but the point is, they're having to re-triangulate, right, which are, is more of a zigzag. They are, and they're different on the issues. Someone yeah. like Cory Booker, for instance, has a, a record on on uh, education reform, on on school choice. He has a, a long record of supporting kind of those policies in a way that actually Barack Obama and many Democrats did over the previous decade, mm -hmm. but has now very much fallen out of favor with uh, the left is really against that, and yeah. the rest of them are going to be against that, and he. He's even had to run from it, but like that's a major difference that's unique to him versus the others, and private this is going to have to come up. Is a big one. That's Kamala a Harris is the only one who has said that she wants to abolish private insurance, and that's what. If you look at the new Kaiser family uh, polling, it shows that people support Medicare for all, but with a private insurance option remaining. So that's going to be course. a tough one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, well, but that's. I mean, that's well. that's a problem, well, and, and that's something. Yeah, yeah, but that that's something that they haven't. And, and I'm going to talk yeah. to Brian Brenberg about the Green New Deal in just a little bit. They all embrace that, but though. They, they <laughs> But, but with, the, with the Green New Deal and, and with Medicare for All, you have to get rid of entire industries. Yeah. You have to get rid of the private insurance industry, which employs at least a half a million people, not to mention getting rid of airlines. And what does that do to the well, stock market? Well, Maisie Hirano can't make it then. So Yeah, Maisie Hirano was the only one smart response. enough to be like, that's eh, really tough to get to Hawaii the with, on to a train. All right, but yeah. Nancy Pelosi said the green dream. She threw her shade at it. That was really funny. It was she, very yeah, funny. That was, uh, like Look at that. Kenny scene. said something nice about Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> no, no, where's no, my shard of life? Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Your glory is <laughs> Jessica Rodney and Alex. Coming up, Republicans.